Partnership is at the heart of Fauna and Flora's approach to conservation. We work across the globe with local partners to ensure that local voices and local knowledge can be brought together with our international expertise to achieve conservation success. The garden at Chelsea recreates one of the Afromontane habitats where you find mountain gorillas. And it shows the habitat both inside and outside of the protected areas where mountain gorillas live. And that's a really important area. Mountain gorillas live in some of the most densely populated parts of Africa. And so the protected areas where you find mountain gorillas are essentially islands within massively densely populated human landscapes. And what that represents is, is the importance of coexistence, that we have to find conservation solutions that work for both wildlife and for people. So I went to um, Central Africa to go and see this project because I needed to understand how the project worked. I needed to see the foliage and the plants there as well. But I also needed to talk to people and find out how in their community, how has this project changed their lives for the better. One of the major things that I found straight away was that there's a complete division on how people use the land and the protected forest area behind, and all that divides them is a boundary wall. We're trying to include as many different kinds of plants within the garden as possible, because the more diverse your plants are, the better diversity you will get in your garden. So at the front of the garden, we have the area that is farmed or used by humans. So I have a, a medicinal plant section. Then we have the boundary wall, and then we're on a steep rise up two and a half metres or so to the back of the garden, where there's a beautiful waterfall, which is up at five metres. And on the back is the protected forest area. So we're getting really jungly there. At the beginning, we have two big bamboo zones, which is gorilla food. And in the centre, we have typical gorilla habitat, which again is more gorilla food, but typical of their environment. By the time you've wound your way up to the top, we're in the upper Afro-Montane area, so the planting is looking again very different. So the plants that we're growing here at Eden need to be grown in tropical conditions. So we're talking really above 20 degrees, um, up to about 30 degrees and high humidity as well for many of them. So here in the biome we have those conditions, but we also have a lovely new nursery facility where we're growing them as well. Also, obviously, it's not just the plants, it's having the expertise to grow them. So having team that understand and know tropical plants as well. For the show garden, we're growing a whole host of plants. So right from little bulbs, which will have beautiful flowers, climbers, shrubs, trees, so the whole spectrum, and we have to be able to grow all of those. Jelaine has similar sustainable uh, approaches to garden design as I do towards landscape construction. So the whole garden really is a sustainable build. The garden has no cement being used, there's no concrete, so there's nothing permanent or, or, or installed. There will be no waste from the garden, uh, everything is being recycled. The vast majority of the um, garden is being relocated to the Eden project. The boulders themselves have been returned back to the stone supplier and we are recycling whatever other remaining material there is so that we should in theory be not using any skips and there will be no waste or landfill coming as a result of this build. We are super excited about the fact that the garden is going to be coming back here for at least two years. It's going to be in this part of the biome. It's an area that we haven't really utilised to its full. And to use this space and for people to be able to immerse themselves, super, super excited. We're bringing something exceptionally unusual, very vibrant and very positive messaging coming through this project that's done so extremely well. Conservation, I think, is a topic that everybody is interested in at the moment and gardeners particularly, I find, are very keen to know what they can do in their own garden. So I'm hoping that the garden is going to inspire the public to take home some good tips on what they can do and also hoping that it will inspire people to look more closely at conservation and maybe support fauna and flora in their work and their efforts as well. But looking at the bigger picture, conservation in the world is a huge topic and we really need to be addressing that very seriously.